Hello and welcome back to 5-Minute Consult on Abdominal Bloating and Distension. In the first consult, I discussed the clinical presentation of abdominal bloating and distension. In this consult, I'll attempt to explain what's known about the cause of these common conditions. Whilst bloating describes the sensation of abdominal pressure and distension, an increase in girth measurement, both symptoms are often lumped together. In addition, whilst the symptoms occur commonly in the absence of the features that define IBS, most studies have been performed in IBS patients with the results then extrapolated to non-IBS functional disorders. Whilst there is currently no unifying explanation for these common symptoms, there are some intriguing clues. To begin with, researchers have recognised a surprising paradox. In patients troubled by abdominal bloating and distension, there is no clear correlation between the symptoms and changes in abdominal girth measurement. An electronic stretch-sensitive belt has been designed that can measure small changes in abdominal girth. The belt has an event marker that allows the patient to timestamp awareness of symptoms. This allows objective matching of symptoms with girth measurement as patients go about their daily business. Surprisingly, half the patients who signal a sense of bloating or distension have no objective evidence of increased girth measurement. This discrepant observation challenges our preconceptions and perhaps accounts for much of the confusion surrounding the understanding and management of the condition. There are other preconceptions. When troubled by bloating, excessive wind and distension, both patients and doctors intuitively implicate increased intestinal gas as the causative factor. After all, there is a lot of gas flow through the gastrointestinal tract. This is derived from swallowed air, gas produced by chemical reactions of digestion, and the gas is generated by the billions of bacteria that inhabit the colon. Intuitively, it would seem that patients with distension and bloating produce more gas than unaffected individuals. Surprisingly, studies indicate that in patients with bloating and distension, intestinal gas volumes are no different from healthy controls. Deeper exploration reveals other interesting findings. For example, it is possible to measure intestinal gas transmit time by infusing room air at a constant rate into the jejunum and measuring the volume of flatters passed spontaneously or captured using a special tube positioned in the rectum. These experiments indicate that in IBS patients the rate of gas flow through the rectum is reduced, indicating that whilst intestinal gas volumes are similar to controls, gas flow through the organ is slowed. Another intriguing observation relates to the effect of rectal distension on intestinal gas transit. Rectal distension plays a regulatory role in gas flow. In healthy controls, Balloon distension of the rectum accelerates gas transit through the gut. However, when the rectum is distended in IBS patients, there is little or no acceleration of gas transit, indicating a faulty rectal distension reflex. This suggests that the reduced intestinal gas flow observed in IBS experiments might be caused by a faulty autonomic rectal enteric reflex. To add to all these observations, there is evidence that gut wall sensation and sensitivity plays a central role in the perception of the symptoms. A research group in Manchester introduced deflated balloons into the stomachs of IBS patients and healthy controls and subjects were asked to report awareness as the balloon was progressively inflated. A girth measurement belt was used to simultaneously record abdominal distension. The findings are intriguing. Compared with healthy controls, IBS patients divided into two groups, those with increased awareness as the balloon was inflated and a group with decreased awareness. Using the girth measurement belt, it was discovered that in general, patients with increased visceral awareness sensed a bloating sensation in the absence of increased girth measurement, whilst measurable distension was more prevalent in patients with reduced visceral awareness. In summary, IBS patients complaining of bloating and or distension have intestinal gas volumes that are similar to healthy controls. However, there is evidence of impaired gas flow, an impaired motor response to rectal distension and a relationship of bloating and distension to increased and decreased gut wall sensitivity respectively. Finally, 
Let's consider dietary factors as many patients relate that their symptoms are provoked by food. Remember that bloating and distension occurs in individuals with lactose and fructose intolerance and also in individuals who consume large quantities of the osmotically active artificial sweetener sorbitol. These factors should be considered in the differential diagnosis. However, lactose intolerance is no more common in IBS than healthy controls and is equally prevalent in IBS patients with and without bloating and distension. Returning to our subject, there is little evidence that food sensitivity is the primary cause of bloating and distension, although there is evidence that dietary factors play a permissive role. Experimentally, fat infusion into the duodenum slows intestinal gas flow, and there is also evidence that in IBS, low fermentation diets such as the FODMAP diet are helpful. Bearing in mind that the symptoms are not caused by increased intestinal gas volume, the effect of low fermentation diets is likely to relate to changing pressure on the gut wall rather than a simple volume effect. But more about that when we discuss treatment. Finally, patients often arrive at the consultation troubled by the thought that bowel infection is the cause of their symptoms. So, is there evidence of a role for infection? Well, while stool bacterial profiles differ between IBS and healthy individuals, there is no direct evidence of a causal relationship with bloating or distension. There are, however, reports that probiotics like bifidobacteria and lactobacilli are helpful in treating IBS bloating and distension, but it remains unclear whether this is due to the change in the colonic biome or a secondary effect on gut sensitivity and perception. In summary, although the terms bloating and distension are often lumped together, the terminology describes two different symptoms likely to be caused by different mechanisms. Current evidence indicates that it's not increased gas volume that provokes the symptoms, but rather altered gut sensation and abnormal autonomic reflexes that play a pivotal role. This concludes the five-minute consult on the causes of functional bloating and distension, and in the final consult, I'll discuss treatment.